Welcome back to our channel where we delve into the mysteries of the cosmos, nomad life, and of course, photography. Today we're going to be talking about the upcoming total solar eclipse that's coming up on April 8th, but as a bonus, there's something pretty intriguing about this eclipse that doesn't happen very often. There's a comet in the mix. It's called the Devil's Comet. Uh, it was spotted by Pons Brooks last year. It's going to be six degrees to the right of Jupiter in the sky during the eclipse. And Jupiter is going to be very visible, especially in dark skies. And the comet, well, it's said to be a magnitude of five, which means it's going to be pretty bright. And what we're going to do in this video is we're going to break down what magnitude means. And we're going to compare some comets that I've shot over the years and talk about the magnitudes of those. And some of these you may have seen or photographed with your naked eyes or camera. All right, so first the definition of magnitude. What is that? How is it measured? It's measured by the brightness of an object in outer space seen from Earth. So the lower the magnitude, the brighter the object is going to be. So in this case, magnitude five is going to be fairly bright for our naked eyes. And if it gets dark enough with the eclipse, then chances are we're gonna be able to see it with our eyes and or with binoculars. But get this, the sliding scale can be pretty tricky, right? So if you have a magnitude of six versus a magnitude of five, it's actually double as bright when it's a five versus a six even though they're only one number apart. And to kind of benchmark what's visible to the naked eye, six and a half magnitude is what our naked eyes can see at night in the dark sky. All right, so to the meat and potatoes, tomatoes, those here, how does that compare with some of the comets we've seen over the past few years and some that I've photographed? I'm gonna break down and show you three comets that I photographed over the last four years. So let's get started. First on the list is Neowise back in 2020. And this was a magnitude between one and two. So a lot of you might have remembered going out, seeing it. Uh, I have a story of when I photographed it in the Bonneville Salt Flats. And I remember driving onto them with my Airstream and my Jeep. And I had my head out the window, less hair, so I, I didn't feel the breeze as much, just, just flapping. But when I was out there, I remember lining up the shot with the mountains behind while looking to see where Neowise was in the sky, which was a really cool experience because my eyes weren't even adjusted for nighttime. So it gives you a good benchmark of magnitude one to two. I think it was like a 1.7, 1.8 when I shot it. All right, second was Comet Leonard, and this was a crazy high plus 20 magnitude. So this definitely was not visible with the naked eye. This actually took me like five to 10 minutes just to locate it in the sky. I knew exactly where I was looking for it, right below this M1 cluster, but I just couldn't, uh, couldn't find it right away. And once I did, it was just a very little blip. But of course, through multiple exposures and post-processing, you can really bring out the details of these comets. And this was captured in Big Bend National Park. I actually drove nine hours just to photograph this comet. I was very stoked about it. Third and most recent was Comet Nishimura. This comet was roughly a 2.7 magnitude, so very visible with the naked eye. But the major problem with Nishimura was that it rose just before the sun, which just to give you another benchmark, the sun is negative 27 magnitude. So yeah, the numbers can go into the negatives and obviously the sun is the brightest object in our sky, so it doesn't get any brighter than that here on Earth. So we really never had complete darkness, uh, at least over here. I was in Washington State, but I was stoked to, to get this, this image right here, hovering over was Mount Stewart. And finally, we get to our main event, right? This is, this is why we're here on this channel. We wanna know more about the Devil's Comet coming up. Uh, it is visible in our night sky right now. There are people that are photographing it and it is going to be even closer to the sun as we get closer to the eclipse. So on April 8th, it should be a magnitude five. Today is, dun, dun, dun. Okay, today's Sunday, the 17th of March. So we're, uh, so we're, we're a few weeks away from, from the eclipse. All right, so the Devil's Comet, it's going to be a magnitude of five. That's what we're forecasted to see it at during the eclipse. 
So you want to make sure, one, you're in a really dark, dark area, two, you're in a really dark area, and three, you've got a dark sky. So basically, you need to be in darkness to, to be able to see it with the naked eye. Uh, you, are, you will be able to most likely see the planets in more residential places like Wordle, Four, and Fives, but yeah, you're, you're going to need like a Wordle 1, 2, I think, to see this comet. Comet? During the eclipse, I mean, this is pretty cool. The eclipse is cool just, just on its own, but to have this extra celestial event happen is uh, very exciting, very exciting. So that leads us to how are we going to photograph it? How am I going to photograph it? Honestly, I'm not sure yet. I need six cameras to be able to do what I want to do on this day. I'm also teaching a workshop, so I have to have things kind of pre-set up. So for sure, I'll be setting up a time lapse and I'm not sure the focal length that I want to go with. I'd love to capture the comet with the sun eclipsing all in one frame. I'm still thinking about the challenges of the changes of lights and, and being able to capture capture those two events simultaneously in a single frame if you're doing a time lapse. So I will for sure have a star tracker set up with a zoomed in version of the comet, probably with my 70 to 200 millimeter. And I may talk about sharing some data with some friends so that we can focus on different areas and kind of combine our efforts. And I'm really curious to know, well, one, did you know about this comet? And two, how are you going to photograph it if you're going to photograph it during the eclipse? And one of the other options I was thinking about was doing a pano. Right, so getting like multiple exposures, but being able to do a pano, so you can place everything in the sky exactly where it should be, just in case those exposures are a little bit wonky, right? Because I, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's it's going to be an interesting one, but I can't wait to see what some of you guys capture out there. And finally, as a bonus for this eclipse, I've also included a nine-page comprehensive guide on step-by-step step, how to photograph the eclipse. I put it down there below in the description so you guys can just go ahead and download that, use it. It breaks down um, when to take your filter off, when to use the filters, uh, how you want to set up your camera, as well as basically everything you need to know from A to Z. Uh, so right down there in the description. And if you haven't hit that like and subscribe button, uh, right now is the time. If you're getting some value out of this, you think you might get that guide, come on. I'm new on YouTube. I'm just trying to figure this all out. I'm, I'm such a small fish here on YouTube, but, but I really want to create more content and bring to you guys stuff that's valuable and informative and maybe have fun doing it. I don't know. This is a fun little venture for me. Cody, what am I supposed to... St I'm supposed to just tell them to like and subscribe and say... Yeah, smash that like button. Smash that like and... Smash that like and subscribe button. That's what Cody says, so that's that's what, what we're going to well, do. That's here. what Peter McKinnon said. Oh, Peter. Yeah, I've actually heard him say that. Yeah, right? Times, yeah. So. Let, let's, let's get back to... Uh, I've got notes here. I'm trying to, like, remember what... All right, I'm going to look here to see what's next. And the next video that I'm going to be recording, actually directly after this recording, is going to be five most interesting facts I've learned about eclipses. And I want to share them with you. And I bet there's stuff on there that you don't know about. As always, thanks for being here, guys. And we'll see you in the next one.